Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, wake up video. Um, Jay Foreman, Map Man. The map that saved the most lives. Preemptive like, my name is Connor. Hello. Let's do it. Not, not an uncoincidence that it's about a map. This episode was written during the coronavirus lockdown. And it's not, not an uncoincidence that it's about a map that stopped a deadly disease. Welcome to Map Men. We're the men. And here's the map. Map Men, Map Men, Map, Map, Map Men, Men. 200 years ago, cholera was one of the most feared illnesses or indeed anythings in the world. Nobody knew how it spread or where it came from, but they did know that if you got it, there was a 50% chance you would die. Sometimes. Uh, diarrhea, dehydration, usually spread in water. A lot of diseases kill you. Like, I, I feel like, you know, there are a lot of, there, a lot of diseases, I, I feel like in the end, end up killing you through dehydration. Often through, di through diarrhea, since so much water is lost, and if you don't get enough back in, you might want to throw up, and then... Before you know it, your your body's out of liquid and you die. And, uh, like, dysentery. So, uh, that's interesting and terrifying. Sometimes within just one day. And a pretty unpleasant final day it would be, too. Within hours, cholera can cause teeth to protrude, eyes to sink, and blood to thicken and turn blue, giving cholera its nickname, the Blue Terror. Well, I'm terrified. This is because cholera causes the body to lose as much water as possible in the shortest possible time. As much as 20 litres in a day. Because it spreads so quickly between people... What a crazy way. To, no way. You have... We have 20 liters of water. 20 liters in a day. Because it spreads so quickly between people, scientists spent literally hours thinking about ways to fix cholera. To a man, they were all convinced it was passed around through bad air, which they called miasma to try and sound clever. It wasn't until someone called Jon Snow, not that Jon Snow, not that Jon Snow, this Jon Snow, did some thinking of his own that progress was finally made. The story starts in Old York in the olden days. John grew up in a poor part of the city where sewage flowed openly in the street and filth was a fact of life. Oh look! An apple! Snow was so grossed out by it, he became unusually health conscious and styled himself on a 21st century hipster. He didn't drink alcohol, was a vegetarian and insisted on only drinking distilled water. Snow escaped his life of squalor by being very good at maths and was offered... You only drink distilled water? What a hippie. Drinking distilled yeah. water. Snow escaped his life of squalor by being very good at maths and was offered a place at Newcastle to train as a physician. He first witnessed the grim effects of cholera while treating patients in the nearby coal mining town of Killingworth. He noticed that men who worked down the pit were dying of cholera at exactly the same rate as everyone else, even though they were nowhere near the foul air of the town. He began to suspect cholera had nothing to do with bad air, instead suspecting it might instead have something to do with the water, instead. But because Victorian scientists really enjoyed using the word miasma, they all ignored his radical theory. Snow would need hard proof to convince the doubters, and finally got the chance years later when he moved down to London. So it was just off of like a hunch? This is what people did? It's just like, oh yeah, of course, bad air. What does that show? What does that mean? That once there's an idea in our heads, it's hard to get rid of? There's a lesson there, and I just gotta find it. In 1854, cholera struck really Soho thirsty. in the heart of London, and Jon Snow had just moved into a house in the heart of... 54, cholera struck Soho in the heart of London, and Jon Snow had just moved into a house in the heart of Soho, on Sackville Street, right by the Itsu. He was in the perfect place at the perfect time. Yes! I mean, how awful. Snow went from door to door recording as much as he could about the cases that had occurred so far. Cholera? Good. Excitingly, he then plotted his data onto a map. When Snow looked at the data he'd collected, he Good. made an astonishing discovery. Almost all the recorded cases occurred near the Broad Street water pump. The further from the pump he went, the fewer deaths he recorded. A clear pattern had emerged. What Jon Snow was doing was one of the earliest known examples of data journalism, which doesn't sound sexy and isn't sexy, but I still it, like it. Yes, it does. Still, in order to finally prove to all the miasmarists out there that it really was the pump, Snow needed a watertight case. That's a good pun. I know. But there appeared to be some anomalies. This is making me so thirsty. I'm really thirsty. Be right back, I need water. That was weird, huh? 
that it really was the pump, Snow needed a watertight case. That's a good pun. I know. Ah. But there appeared to be some anomalies, such as an isolated case miles away to the north in Hampstead. How did the cholera get all the way Track up there? Track it down. He went to speak to the elderly victim, and it turned out her niece had been bringing her the water from Broad Street. Oh, good. Dear Auntie, happy birthday. Enjoy this lovely bucket of poop. Lots of love, Rutella. Because, like many others, she thought the Broad Street water tasted sweeter. Mm, and we'll try yes. not to think about the fact that <laughs> sweet. Something about this water is just very nice. Got a nice poopy Dirty flavor. In this case was another way of saying contained sewage. <laughs> as well as cases far away from the pump, there was another type of anomaly that needed explaining. Uh, Non-cases really close to the pump, such as the workhouse on nearby Poland Street, which had bizarrely recorded hardly any deaths at all. So Snow went to visit the workhouse and found they had their very own water well for water. Water surprise. There were also no deaths at the local ale distillery. I'm in on it. When Snow tried to interview people who worked there, nothing they said made any sense. Which made sense because it turned out that instead of getting cholera, they'd been getting drunk. No water, no cholera. Every apparent setback to Snow's water theory only ended... Every apparent setback to Snow's water theory only ended up making his case even waterier and tighterier than ever before. So he took his map to the local health commission, who were convinced enough to remove the handle from the Broad Street pump. And a good job they did, because the case is in... Who were convinced enough to remove the handle from the Broad Street pump. And a good job they did, because the cases immediately started drying up. The other two were better. Yeah, I know. But how did that pump get infected in the first place? He found the answer with the help of a holy gossip monger. Henry Whitehead, the local priest, knew everybody's business, including who had diarrhoea when. With a combination of Whitehead's nosiness and Snow's clever map making, they were able to trace the outbreak back to case zero, a baby living at number 40, whose mother had been washing nappies into the house's underground cesspit. Not, not unsurprisingly, they found cracks between the cesspit and the well, finally confirming that everyone had been drinking number 40's number 2's. We have to take our hats off to this gruesome twosome for collecting so much data over what must have been months of work. Actually, the whole endeavour from start to finish took just three days. Wow! Shockingly, despite all the evidence they gathered, and with the outbreak cleared up as a result of their work, hmm? the mainstream miasmarists continue to ignore Jon Snow's findings. We still like the name, sir. I was going to say something funny and I forget. Shame. And the local council soon popped the handle back on the Broad Street pump as if nothing was ever wrong with it. As always seems to happen when someone does something amazing, Jon Snow died before his work was accepted. Luckily today, medical experts are always taken seriously, and their advice is always listened to by people in charge who are never interested in personal political gain over rigorous, evidence-led, peer-reviewed scientific facts. Except sometimes it isn't, which is why every year to this day, the medical community holds the Pump Handle Lecture, during which a mock handle is ceremonially removed and replaced in recognition of the struggle of getting people in charge to listen to doctors. Perhaps the most fun way Jon Snow is remembered today is in the form of this pub, the Jon Snow Pub. We're not sure how the famously teetotal Jon Snow would have felt about this, but either way, cheers to Jon Snow. Cheers. How the famously teetotal Jon Snow would have felt about this. Teetotaled? Yes, but either way, cheers to Jon Snow. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Hmm, tastes quite sweet. Hello, I'm Edward. And I'm William. And you join us at the start of a motortastic road trip. Over the next 52 days, we're going to be visiting every single motorway service station in Britain. And on the way, we'll get to see lots of other really cool things like castles and cathedrals. No, there's no time for that. We're only visiting motorway service stations. We're going to visit Toddington and Newport Pagnall and Watford Gap and Charnock Ridge. Oh, this 2,713 mile journey is going to be really boring. And Leicester North. How? Oh, duh. Because you're going on different roads and stuff. Never mind. I'm not going to comment what I was thinking because it makes me sound stupid. I know. I'll keep myself entertained by listening to a wide selection of audiobooks using Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Audiobooks are like books for your ears, usually read by the author, sometimes read by you other slash handsome Matt men. 
You can find everything on Audible, from bestsellers and new releases to languages, Erotica. business, motivation, and celebrity memoirs, such as Pat Sharp's hilarious semi-fictional autobiography. And it's not just audiobooks you find on Audible. There's all sorts of spoken word entertainment, like podcasts, guided wellness programs, and TV and radio shows. You can keep credits for up to a year and then binge on a whole series. You can download and listen offline anytime across devices without losing your spot. Oh, it's so good! If you want to try Audible for yourself, just go to audible.com slash mapmen to get a free 30-day trial. And for Americans, there's also a special holiday offer on Audible Plus membership, starting from just $4.95 a month for the first six months and then just $7.95 after that. If you're in the US, text MAPMEN to 500-500. Or if you're in any other country, go to audible.com slash MAPMEN for a free 30-day trial of Audible. There's like nothing stopping you. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this trip now that I know it's going to be accompanied by the soundtrack of hours and hours of scintillating entertainment from Audible. And Thurrock. Right. Let's motor away. Oh my god, I am still... Isn't it crazy how, even after all these videos, I'm still caught off guard when the wheel... When I finally notice the wheel is on the right side of the car. Not the right... The right as in the... The, the side. Map men, map men, map, map, map men, 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 men. I'm really glad I didn't. I planned on just going with it, but oh, it's good. Okay, I'm sorry if I'm going nuts. I don't usually wake up this early, but I said I would because I said today is the start of a new chapter of me being productive. All right, see you guys next time. Hope you're doing well. Love y'all. Chin, chip, 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 chip. Keep your chin up. If you're not, you'll be good soon. Don't worry. Bye, guys.